What's cracking racking? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This is my endocrinology playlist. In previous videos, we discussed the G-protein coupled receptor. We talked about receptor tyrosine kinase, serine and threonine protein kinase receptors, non-receptor tyrosine kinase. Today, let's do a quick review. Please watch these videos in order. Today we will review the G proteins, the ligand gated ion channels, serine and threonine kinase receptor proteins, insulin versus glucagon. How does glucagon work? G protein coupled, it's GS. And then insulin works via the receptor tyrosine kinase. The strong independent woman and the not so strong independent woman. Receptor tyrosine kinase versus non-receptor tyrosine kinase. This is also known as the JAK-STAT pathway. As you know, the CEO is the hypothalamus, the general manager is the pituitary, and then we have three glands that obey the pituitary, and we have three glands that do not care about the pituitary. It happened to be that these three employees secrete lipid-soluble hormones, and therefore the receptor is inside the cell, could be in the cytoplasm or the nucleus. Conversely, the three glands that do not care about the pituitary secrete protein and peptide hormones, and where is the receptor located? It's on the outside surface of the cell, or at least part of the membrane. We have story of two hormones, lipid soluble versus water soluble. If you're lipid soluble, I'll put the receptor inside the cell. If you're water soluble, you will not be able to cross the lipid bilayer. Therefore, I'll put your receptor on the outside. Hormone signal transduction pathway. We have intracellular receptor if you are a lipid soluble hormone. And then we have cell surface receptor, such as G protein, ligand gated enzyme link. The enzyme link could be receptor tyrosine kinase, and this is the story of insulin and the growth factors. And then you have the serine and threonine, that's the story of the TGF beta. Glucagon is here, insulin is here. Next, non-receptor tyrosine kinase or the JAK-STAT pathway for the growth hormone, prolactin, epotepo, GCSF, interleukins, and interferon. Note that the growth factors are here, but the growth hormone is here. Now let's start by talking about the intracellular receptor. The hormone has to be lipid soluble. It will cross the cell membrane, goes inside the cell, and then ligand receptor complex. Hormone receptor elements are stimulated, stimulating DNA, transcription, translation, all kinds of good stuff. This applies for the steroid hormones, thyroid hormones, and vitamin D. What do you mean by steroid hormones? Aldosterone, cortisol, testosterone, progesterone, and estrogens. The cell surface receptors include G protein couple receptors, ligand gated ion channels, enzyme link receptor. G protein story. Before the ligand binds to the receptor, the G protein is inactive. If it's inactive, it's bound to GDP and the alpha, beta, and gamma subunit are together. Okay, but upon activation, when the ligand attaches to the receptor, the G protein gets excited, and it's gonna bind GTP instead of GDP. Let's kick the GDP in the teeth. Get out of here. Alpha alone is gonna bind to GTP, and it's gonna kick beta and gamma subunits away. Get out of here. Now, alpha is active, GTP is uh, everything is active. Active to do what? Well, it depends. I could use the GQ pathway for phospholipase C and calcium for contraction. If you want to contract a smooth muscle, I am your guy. If you want to squeeze a gland to secrete, I am your man. If you want to squeeze a vesicle via exocytosis, you can count on me. Calcium, contraction. Or GS coupled receptor to stimulate adenylate cyclase to convert ATP into cyclic AMP, or GI, I for inhibition, S for stimulation. Inhibition of what? Of the adenylate cyclase. And then this will lead to decrease cyclic AMP formation. This is the story of the GQ coupled receptor, such as all of these receptors and all of these hormones. The end result is calcium. Calcium, contraction of smooth muscles, such as bronchoconstriction, vasoconstriction, etc. Then you have the GS coupled receptor. Stimulate adenylate cyclase, converts ATP to cyclic AMP, protein kinase A, and then increase calcium in the heart, increase cardiac muscle contractility. 
I inhibit myosin light chain kinase, causing smooth muscle relaxation. Not smooth muscle contraction. No, 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 no. Smooth muscle relaxation. You get bronchodilation, vasodilation. Beta 1 is going to increase renin secretion from the kidney and beta stimulation will increase aqueous humor secretion in your eye. Don't forget that glucagon is capable of performing its function because glucagon is GS coupled. Then let's talk about GI coupled receptor, the exact opposite. I inhibit adenylate cyclase, inhibit the conversion of ATP to cyclic MP, decreasing the protein kinase A, no cardiac contractility, no smooth muscle relaxation, no renin, no aqueous humor. Here is the G-protein story again. A water-soluble hormone is now bound to the G-protein receptor. Let's call it GS-coupled. All right, GTP, because now I'm active. Thank you. Alpha subunit is gonna kick the beta and gamma subunit in the teeth. Get out of here. GTP and the alpha subunit will activate a delayed cyclase to convert ATP into cyclic AMP, and then cyclic AMP will activate protein kinase A. If you are a kinase, you will add a phosphate. So if you're an enzyme, I will add a phosphate to you to become enzyme phosphate. Transporter, transporter phosphate. Receptor, receptor phosphate. Transcription factor, transcription factor phosphate. Ion channel, ion channel, etc., etc. Activation, inactivation. Add a phosphate, remove a phosphate. Kinase versus phosphatase. Here is the G protein activation and inactivation story. When the hormone binds to the receptor, this is activation. Therefore, GTP and the alpha subunit. Let's kick beta and gamma away. All right, but then as we get inactive, we do the exact opposite from GTP to GDP, from alpha alone into alpha beta gamma complex. All right, now I'm inactive. I wanna get active again. Well, get rid of the GDP and welcome back GTP. We're done with this, we're done with this. Let's talk about this, ligand gated ion channels. This is the story of acetylcholine, GABA, glutamate, and IP3. Here is a ligand, here is a receptor. Ligand receptor complex, boom, conformational change. A channel is gonna open and it's gonna let an ion in or out. If you're talking about the GABA story, we are letting chloride into the neuron. Chloride is negative. When a negative enters into the nerve cell, the nerve cell gets inhibited. And when the nerve cell gets inhibited, this is called sedation and hypnosis. And that's how benzodiazepines and barbiturates work. Now let's turn our attention to the receptor tyrosine kinase, the study of the insulin and the growth factors. Pause and review. Let's go. When we talk about insulin, insulin is the feeding gland. You have just had a meal. Okay, too much glucose in my blood. It's going to stimulate the pancreas via GLUT2. The pancreatic beta cell is going to respond by secreting insulin. Insulin is going to go to the target cell, usually adipose tissue or skeletal muscle cells. Insulin will tell these cells to open their door. What's the name of the door? GLUT4. All right, I will open the door. Then what? I will let glucose into the cell. And since we are living in abundance, you can store this glucose here as big glycogen molecules. Here is my meal. Here is the glucose in the bloodstream. Glucose is gonna go to the pancreas, especially the beta cells. And then glucose is gonna enter into the beta cells via GLUT2. And then glucose is gonna get trapped by becoming glucose 6-phosphate. And then you continue glycolysis. At the end of the day, you increase your ATP. This will increase ATP to ADP ratio. You will close the potassium channel. Potassium will not leave. When the positive stays inside the cell, this is activation, hashtag depolarization. When the beta cell is active, it's going to open its calcium door. Calcium is going to enter. Calcium, rupture the vesicle, pew! Insulin is out. Insulin is in the bloodstream now. Insulin is in the bloodstream. Insulin is going to bind to the insulin receptor. Tell me about this receptor. It's a receptor tyrosine kinase. It has an intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. Like a strong independent woman doesn't need help from anybody. And then activation via autophosphorylation. And then you have two stories. The PI3 kinase pathway story and the RASMAP kinase story. The PI3 kinase story is the story that will add the door, which is known as GLUT4, and then when you add the door, you can open it to let glucose in. The RASMAP kinase pathway story is the story of cell division, proliferation, and growth. 
Where does this happen? What is this cell? An adipose cell or a skeletal muscle cell? Don't forget that all of your glutes are insulin independent, except glute 4, which is insulin dependent. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. How does glucagon work? The GS coupled receptor. How does insulin work? Insulin works on the tyrosine kinase receptor or the receptor tyrosine kinase. What do insulins and cancers have in common? Both are pro-growth. Just like the central bank. Just joking. Here is insulin. Here's the target cell. The target cell is adipose or skeletal muscle. Let's go. Insulin is going to act on the receptor tyrosine kinase, which has two alpha subunits, two beta subunits. How will they activate each other? By phosphorylation, because they do have tyrosine kinase activity. Intrinsic, that is. I don't need help from anyone else, because I'm a strong, independent woman. And then I'm going to phosphorylate the IRS. And then phosphorylate here, phosphorylate here. And then you have the RAS story, and we have the PIP3 story. Let's start with this story, okay? I'm gonna phosphorylate this part, which is the SH2 domain for the PIP3 kinase. PIP3 kinase will add a phosphate. When you add a phosphate to PIP2, it becomes PIP3. Then you activate PDPK1, which activates PKB or AKT, which is protein kinase B. So glucagon acts via protein kinase A, but insulin acts via protein kinase B. That's why they're opposites. And then get that GLUT4 out of the vesicle, and that's the door for glucose. To let glucose into the skeletal muscle cell or into the adipose tissue, you can take that glucose and make it into glycogen. Also, I will promote protein synthesis. That's how your muscles grow. Some Joe Rogan action. Next, the story of the RAS and RAF. So I phosphorylate here, and then I phosphorylate GRB2, and then GTP. Activating RAS, activating RAF, M-E-K, M-A-P-K, E-R-K, etc. Or as I call it, the RAS, the RAF, and the mocking maverick elk. The RAS, the RAF, and the mocking elk. What's the end result? Pro-growth and differentiation. Insulin is anabolic. Glucagon is catabolic. Insulin decreases protein kinase A and decreases cyclic AMP. Glucagon increases protein kinase A and increases cyclic AMP. Glucagon is similar to beta agonists. And that's why glucagon is the antidote of the beta antagonist. Insulin versus glucagon. Insulin loves dephosphorylation. Glucagon loves phosphorylation of the rate limiting enzyme, that is. All right, how do you dephosphorylate? By activating phosphatase, which removes a phosphate, such as protein phosphatase 1. Hey, glucagon, how do you add a phosphate? Because it activates protein kinase A. Insulin decreases your cyclic AMP, glucagon increases your cyclic AMP. Now, let's talk about this. Serine kinase, threonine kinase receptor protein. This is the story of the TGF beta and others. The receptor has two subunits or two types, type 1 and type 2. Where does the ligand bind? The ligand binds only to type 2 part. And then type 2 is going to activate type 1. And as you know, activation is phosphorylation. Remember, this is a receptor, not dimerization, but oligomerization. Type 2 first, which activates type 1 next, and then you're going to activate SMAD proteins. As you know, the end result is always transcription, translation, etc. Now let's talk about the JAK-STAT pathway, also known as non-receptor tyrosine kinase. Here is the ligand, such as growth hormone or prolactin, such as erythropoietin, thrombopoietin. Ligand binds to the receptor. You had a monomer here and a monomer here. When the ligand binds, they dimerize. Does this receptor have intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity? Absolutely not. It's not a strong independent woman. In fact, it is dependent. On whom? On Jack. Jack is going to activate the other Jack. They're going to hug each other, kiss each other, autophosphorylate each other. They even seduce stat. A stat here and stat here. As a result of this seduction, even the two stats will start hugging and kissing each other. And boom, they will enter into the nucleus. Transcription, translation, boom. 
Now, let's talk about another story that we have not mentioned in the series. It's the calcium calmodulin system, also a second messenger system. Even though we have not talked about this in the endocrinology playlist, we have talked about it in my physiology playlist when we discussed smooth muscle physiology. Remember, calcium is the hero of contraction, right? Of skeletal muscles and even smooth muscles. Calcium binds calmodulin, activates Kinase. What kind of kinase is this? Myosin light chain kinase. When I activate a kinase, I will add a phosphate. And this will convert myosin light chain from myosin light chain without a phosphate into myosin light chain phosphate that has a phosphate group. This was inactive and relaxed muscle, but this is active, contracting smooth muscle. If this is a blood vessel, it's a dilated vessel. If this was a blood vessel, it's a vasoconstricted vessel. That's the story of calcium calmodulin, the exact opposite of freaking nitric oxide. Calcium contracts, nitric oxide dilates. How does it dilate? By activating a phosphatase to convert myosin light chain phosphate into myosin light chain. Here's your nitric oxide. Boom, guanylate cyclase converts GTP into cyclic GMP, activates protein kinase G, activates a phosphatase. What kind of phosphatase? Myosin light chain phosphatase. To convert myosin light chain that had a phosphate or myosin light chain phosphate to myosin light chain without a phosphate. From active to inactive, from contracted to relaxed. You get relaxation of smooth muscles in your blood vessel and even in your erectile tissue. This is how Viagra works. This is how Cialis works. We're done. Pause and review. If you like this video, you will adore my endocrine pharmacology course. We'll talk about androgens, estrogens, thyroid hormone, insulin. What are the types of insulin? How do you administer insulin? How do you calculate the dose of insulin? I'll talk about cortisol, all kinds of hormone at medicosisperfectsnetics.com. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, such as my endocrine pharmacology course, my antibiotics course, my neuropharmacology course, etc. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.